Yeah, I, actually I'm, I'm hoping to try to tell you how to make my life easier and uh, yours probably more comfortable. So, um, who am I, who are we? Um, we are, we've been founded in 97, so we are in Germany in legal age. Um, we are not just a blog, we are actually journalists. Uh, we've got 40 million page impressions per month, per month uh, 12 million visits. We report anything related to tech, uh, being politics, economy, culture, art and software. Um, we are 15 editors, plus various freelance. Um, not all of them are working full-time. Me, for example, um, I'm working part-time, because I'm still studying. Um, I'm covering everything in the open source uh, area, which is quite a lot, from kernel to desktop, web. Um, I'm even yeah, forced to report on proprietary um, proprietary stuff. So yeah, I have a lot to do. Um, how do I work? Um, I read blogs and email, and that's basically it because that's just enough to to filter and to get it actually out because my time is limited. Um, what do I do with this info? I write news, uh, short pieces to to just inform the uh, public audience, our readers. And I'm going to write featured articles, which are mostly tests of software, and some big uh, reports, like the trip to Disneyland yesterday. Um, yeah. So how do you work? You code, like a lot of code, and you discuss. Um, I could theoretically participate in these discussions, even passively, like following the mailing list, following the RSC, but I would have to follow like 300 mailing lists. Um, that's a bit too much because I would get like 15,000 emails a day, I guess. So that's not going to happen. So you need to make my life really easy. Um, so how do you do that? You seriously need a press team. Be it just one person, be it a real team for three, four people but you really need this. Um, people that are not coders, people that are just doing the press outreach, you need this, believe me. Um, if you're working at the company, you probably already have this. Um, get them to contact me, and force them to contact me. Um, I'm always willing to speak to you as engineers, but that's going to get <laughs> complicated quite a lot, um, especially because you, you're, yeah. Just code. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, have a press team that I can talk to and that filters what you do because that helps me and that helps you and that helps your users. Okay, so what do I need? I need pictures, video, and info that I could use for my news. So how do you do this? Just take screenshots of your software. If your software is just a library, show me what the library does. Like uh, Timothy did with the um, pictures of the data encoding, just fucking show me what you're doing. That's not that hard. Um, if you're actually developing UI stuff, please, please make screenshots, uh, screencasts of it. Um, it's not that hard to do it. Uh, no one does it, OnCloud does it. Um, the KDE people have done this for their Plasma Mobile. Um, VLC is not doing this, although that's kind of contradicting because you're multimedia, so why don't you just give me video or even screenshots? Um, and please um, license this so I can use it, like Creative Commons. Um, if you put stuff on YouTube, there's actually a button in the user inter interface of the author of the video to say, okay, yes, please use Creative Commons. If you don't use it and put it on YouTube, I am not able to use it at all. I'm legally not allowed to reuse your video, as is none of your users. That's nothing you as open source developers are, sh that you should do. Just head it out, Creative Commons license, and please use an ordinary license, not just 
Creative Commons by, you have to actually use the number, so that's a real license. Um, please, please do this. Um, yeah, I need release notes, and Git logs are no release notes at all. <laughs> no, they are not. You have to explain what you have done. And no, <laughs> have you have you ever written have you ever written a comment that has more than two lines of explanations? Yes. 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 Okay. So then filter this and put it into release notes that are actually readable for your target audience. The target audience of VLC is 500 millions of users that just want to click the play button. So Keep that in mind. The they, they are not going to read the Git log. I have to do it for them, and that's quite hard. So please provide me with ordinary release notes, because everything that's not in there is not going to be reported. As I said, I'm not able to follow the Git logs of 200 projects. I'm not able to follow the IRC logs. I'm not able to follow your mailing lists. Please provide release notes. Um, and then make this as detailed as possible. Let me decide for my audience what I am going to write. Let others decide what they are going to report. Let your users decide what they are interested in, in the release notes. Um, yeah, and the, the hard, hardest thing um, for me is to actually get these notes before your release. There's no point in releasing VLC 3.0 with like 7,000 of comments, uh, nearly two years of development, and then just say, yeah, we released it, here, take a look at it. What? No, I, I need to test it before, I need to make a featured article on this, because that a really huge audience that is interested in what VLC 3.0 is actually doing. But I can't provide this kind of info if you just push a release button. And then say, yeah, we just released it. Uh, that brings me to my next point. <laughs> okay, I, I know why you disagree, but even if your development is feature-based, there is something called an experimental flag, or a beta flag, or an alpha flag. You can still release on time with these flags. Every three months, just release and say, okay, this is experimental, this is stable, this is a patch for the stable, this is alpha, this is beta. This is going to make my life easier, this is going to make your audience understand what you're actually doing. They're, they're really... They're, they're not... Well, the, the audience of you multimedia people is not technical at all, as I said. They want to click a play button. And they, they don't understand why you're, why you're needing two years to release a real C through the low. They just don't understand it. Um, and then they don't understand it why it's always too late, released. Um, yeah, talk to me. Please, please, please come to me. Um, although I'm not a programmer myself, I did some programming at university. I did some math classes. Um, I'm doing the open source stuff for Golem now for nearly five years. So I know my way around, I'm not stupid, I'm not your target audience. I'm actually quite good at understanding what you're trying to do. So come to me, if you have anything that you want to, to get out, just tell me, come to me, write me an email, call me, meet me in our offices at dinner at this conference. And do this not just with me, but worldwide, like not just in the US and Central Europe, but I don't know how many users we'll see has in India, for example, but there are nearly a billion people living in India, so there's quite a huge target audience for we'll see. Um, go there, talk to them. You most probably have developers in these countries. They are techies. They are on the web, they read forums, they read blogs, they read ordinary news sites. So they know the important news sites 
in their own countries. So just if you put up a press team, it would be like one weeks of crowdsourcing and you would end up with 3,000 websites all over the world that you can just talk to by sending an email. And you could reach, and then with this reach of the 3,000 websites, you could reach millions of users that are already using ESC or possible new users. Just do it. There are only just a few um, positive examples that do it like that. Uh, for example, the Document Foundation for LibreOffice. Um, OwnCloud is doing it with me because I know the press guy of OwnCloud. <laughs> um, and the way the AS is doing it. It's just always the big firms like Microsoft and Intel that send me really, really crappy press notes. Two days after the engineer announced it, I can't use this. Two days later, it's just old. It's just not news. Um, are there any questions? Please ask. Okay. So basically, to, to sum up what you just told is that every open source project, even if it consists of two people, should have a press team and notify every goddamn third rate IT publication I'm, out there well, with their release notes so that they can then make this I, big I've thing been not, this. I've been not talking about some well, hobbyist project with two developers, but we will see you get developers that are not actually employed full time to work in VLC, but people that stuck around for the last five or ten years and that is not going away and they still common stuff, so if, you're, if you have way more than a million users, you have to get this done. There's no way around it. Yes. Actually, my project has maybe not a million, but a couple hundred thousand users, but we're still just three people. We, do, we sometimes have stretches of time that go like almost half a year with a handful, five commits. Why should I do a release every three months. You said I must do a release every three months. I goddamn do not please, have to do a release. Please don't release. insult me. Please lower your voice. I'm not here to insult you. I'm here to give you advice. So if you're not taking my advice, that's okay. But please don't insult me. That's all I'm going to say. Please sit down. Next question. Yeah, Dan the Beard. So you're, you're saying well, we should get press releases so we can get more developers or more donations? Yeah, or to, to just reach out. Yeah, because the, the more people know about what you're doing, the more people you attract, be it users, be it uh, annoyed customers, be it new contributors. If no one is knowing about your project, no one is going to contribute. Yeah. So you talked about the various different ways we do development, ILC, email, etc., mailing lists, etc. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, unlike yourself, there's various bits of gutter journalism out there that take snippets from ILC, from mailing lists, completely out of context, reproduce them, and say, ah, blah, 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 whatever, and it all makes us look bad. Um, do you stop that? <laughs> um, there, there are several people in this room that already have worked with me, that have a personal relationship to me, that I hope trust me in this kind of situation. Not you, not you. Yeah, I, 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 I could imagine whom you might be ta uh, talking about. I can't register anything in my head at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, as you, as you say, it's about trust, but still. Um, uh, uh, I wouldn't work like this because it's not my work ethics. I, I, before I write anything, I, I have to be certain. One way to be certain about something is if you actually give me release notes that I can access. The other thing is, everything, or nearly everything you do is public. If you are going that line, you have to just live with the outcome. Um, there's two possible ways to deal with this. Just give a fuck at all and say uh, whatever, I don't care. Um, the other way is just nag the authors of the articles. If there's something wrong, just write them an email. If they're uh, every week wrong and you 
um, write an email every week, they're going to be so annoyed that they're going to, be, to stop being wrong. Um, <laughs> well, that's, um, if there are um, actually wrong facts in my article, um, I get a shitload of bad, bad comments uh, in our forums. So I'm trying to avoid this, and I'm trying, I'm trying to actually work with you. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm on, on other conferences. So if you don't know me in person yet, try to get to know me. Try to maybe not trust me, but try to feel comfortable with what I do by just know me and by reading what I do. Like, judge me by what I do. And I think what I do is hopefully better than that of, well, other uh, journalists. Are there any other questions? Yeah. I agree with the fact that you don't have to tell us or schedule because each, each project has its resources and its needs, so the release process is not the same for everyone. And for most of those projects, we have nightly built, so you can always test by yourself the current uh, development and advancement of the project. Um, so that's related to your beta or alpha time. Um, you yeah. always have nightly to test well, well, I'm, Okay, um, you just said that I'm always able to test nightlies because there are nightly builds and stuff. Okay, first thing, um, as I said, there are hundreds or maybe thousands of, of single software products that I have to cover. So I'm not able to test all of them, not even the nightlies. That's not going to happen. That's just going to happen with the really, really big ones like Chrome or Firefox. Um, the next thing, these builds don't work. Because if I have to git clone the code, have to rebuild it myself and then test it. So if they are built, um, that's okay. The thing is, how do you get that build binary to me? Why are some PPA on Launchpad or why are your own build RPM or dev or whatever? They're most probably not going to work. They may, they may work for you, but they may not work for me. Um, that's a problem what I hope is going to be solved by all this container stuff. But I don't see the con container stuff actually being used for UI desktop software. And that's not going to change in one or two years, maybe in five. But until then, that's going to be a problem. No one? Thank you.